Two questions. The first one, regarding the market research, how are you doing that from a local level to the state level? Sure. One of the, one of the big things we look at is supply of inventory in a given market. So we want to look at, you know, we want to see if supply is going up and days on market. Days on market, supply, and the sold price versus list price tell you a lot about a market. So if the ratio between sold price and list price, you know, there starts to be a bigger gap, means people are discounting their properties. Typically what happens before that, days on market starts going up. We also want to look at supply of inventory. At the end of the, the retail cycle or the real estate cycle, what happens to supply? Low. A lot of markets you see low supply because all, everything's getting absorbed. When there's low supply, all other things being the same, Economics 101 says what about price? What? Up. It drives price up. All other factors being equal, supply goes down, price goes up. All other factors being equal, supply, actually, supply goes down and demand goes up, what happens to price? Go up even more. Because you've got extra demand and low supply fueling this last stage of the real estate market. Exactly. The only donut shop. Exactly. The only mini donut store in town. So, and actually, we're going to transition. You let me know, Francis, when you want me to transition to kind of what's going on with this. So, yeah, it's very, very important. Um, did I answer your question? Yeah, and the other one was your sources for buying right now. Are you just going through the auction or are you looking at other things? Sources at Seller Direct. We, we actually have a, a lot of bird dogs that bring us their deals. And my offer to a bird dog is I'm a guaranteed sale. That's a great offering. If you got someone who does a couple deals a month and I, they just got to bring me the deal and they know they're getting five or $10,000, that's a great way to get business. Because they're doing all the marketing, they bear all the expense, they weed through the 100 dogs and they give me the one good deal. I'm okay with that. I, I have no problem paying that fee because otherwise I got to hire staff for that. And that they've done that, they've done the work, and they get rewarded for that. Foreclosure auctions. We buy in several counties around the state. It wasn't rocket science. We actually started with the most amount of third party sales per county, worked our way down the list. Remember what I said about buying properties? You gotta have the you gotta be able to buy the right property. You got you got first of all, it's gotta be the right kind of property. Then you gotta have the right price. And then you gotta have enough of it to scale. So after we started with the scale, so we looked at the most amount of third party bidder sales per county in Florida. But as we worked our way down the list, we look at Broward County, not competitive. Even though it's got the right kind of houses and it's got scale, what is the one thing we couldn't do? Price. Buy at the right price. So I killed that one. So I just went down through the list and out of the 21 counties that are online, we buy in about eight because they're ones that we can buy the right kind of houses at the right kind of price and they have scale. Now the counties that only have 10 per month, it's just not worth it. We, we look at counties that have hundreds of sales per month. That way then there's enough scale for us to be able to buy our, our percentage of those properties. But so you got foreclosure auctions, you got for sale by owner deals that are brought to us. We, we're working now with uh, Dalmar's company and we're gonna be doing uh, seller direct, like a JV there. And we also buy from all the major auction houses. You got auction.com, you got Zome, Hudson & Marshall, you got HUD. HUD, HUD's good, but only if you know how to buy it on the trigger prices when they lower them. HUD, HUD properties are fantastic when they get aged because if you get your offer in early and you're dealing with an agent that knows what they're doing, they'll do this huge price drop because they want to dump it. It'll go from 100 to 50. You get alerted, or your agent does, about the price drop. The MLS is not updated for two or three days. You know what's cool? 50,000, you offer 50,100, it's gone. So, it gets updated in the MLS and it's already pending. You, you've snagged that deal. So when you understand how to exploit some of those deals, you can, you can definitely make money. A lot of the aged inventory in the MLS is, is ripe for making those low offers, especially if it's institutionally owned. So any source that we can make money, but we, we have a report every month that tells me where I'm buying from. I look at those numbers and I try to then match that with, against profit. So I'm looking at where I'm buying my deals, which one's the most profitable, and that's where we're pruning what we buy. But I, I really want my strike rate to go up and my effort to go down. And what I mean by that is I want to home in the properties where I have a good chance of buying it at the right price. And I know historically by buying that kind of asset, I'm going to make money based on my historical data that shows me where I'm making money.